not easy to talk about the compound that everyone knows a lot about and one of the most widely discussed supplements in the world. First of all, let us agree that when we talk about omega-3 fatty acids, we talk about EPA and DHA, which are coming either from fatty fish or krill oil. And not the ALA, alpha linoleic acid, which contain in canola, soybeans and walnut. Although the pathways of DHA and EPA are not yet 100% clear, what is known is that these omega-3 fatty acids reduce the level of triglycerides in blood both during fasting and after food intake. And they also reduce the production of very low density lipoproteins in liver, the VLDL. Apart from that, omega-3 fatty acids have anti-inflammatory effect. Thing is, the fatty acids composition in cell membranes is linked to inflammatory responses on the cell through changes in the cell signaling. Cells involved in the inflammatory response are typically rich in the omega-6 fatty acid, the arachidonic acid, because the acosanoids produced from the arachidonic acid participate in inflammation. EPA and DHA give rise to acosanoids which are different from the one produced by arachidonic acid and have anti-inflammatory and inflammation resolving properties. By the way, the healthy ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids should be 2 to 1. But with a modern diet, it can be as high as 10 to 1. Hence, the actual daily combined dose of APA and DHA should be between 1000 to 3 and even 4000 mg. Especially for those with higher triglycerides levels. That's cool. Says the new recommendations of American Heart Association. In the same publication, they stated that omega-3 acids decrease risk of arrhythmias, which can lead to sudden cardiac death, decrease risk of thrombosis, which can lead to heart attack and stroke, decrease triglyceride and remnant lipoprotein levels. It also decreases rate of growth of atherosclerotic plaque, improves endothelial function, lowers blood pressure and reduces inflammatory responses. In elder adults and individuals with a history of myocardial infarction or heart attack, DHA EPA supplementation for four months reduced and stabilized post-exercise cardiovascular markers such as heart rate, recovery, stroke volume and heart rate variability. In young adult athletes, omega-3 supplementation lowers peak heart rate, reduces resting heart rate variability and oxygen consumption requirement during exercise. It was also found to reduce TNF and CRP levels in exercise in men. It's remarkable, isn't it? Other studies have found improved quadriceps strength as well as overall activation of skeletal muscle is postmenopausal and elderly women as a result of physical exercise and omega-3 supplementation. EPA, but not the DHA, was also found helpful in management of depression in a dose up to 2000 mg of EPA. Omega-3 fatty acid supplementation helps in strength training. It improves nerve conduction and increases muscle activation. Studies have shown that DHA EPA supplementation before an eccentric biceps curls leads to more repetitions, better range of motion, lower levels of the inflammatory cytokine interleukin-6, reduction of muscle strength loss and delayed onset muscle soreness three days after exercise. The maximal back squat test showed improved muscle activation and lower fatigue. 
overall safety studies show that it is safe to take up to 5,000 milligram of omega-3 acid, uh, not more as the efficacy versus safety ratio does not improve with doses more than 5 gram per day. Consider 2,000 to 3,000 milligram per day of combined EPA and DHA as a good amount for all cases.